Uh, all right, now let us look at some uh, simple properties of series that um, basically follow from properties of limits, right? So uh, if we take a series that converges and we multiply every its term by a constant, then the new series is also going to be convergent and its sum is going to be the sum of the original series multiplied by the same constant. Also, the, if we take two convergent, convergent series, then the sum is again convergent and the uh, sum of the sum of the two series is, of course, just, just going to be the sum of the. So it, it's basically is is like for for limits. So uh, let, let me show you how we can apply the, these simple properties. It, it's something like limit laws only just for sums. For products, it doesn't really work, right? So let, let me maybe explain why. So why does it work for sums but not for products, right? So if you have like this series. Um, the sum of a n plus plus b n, and you know that this series converges and this series converges, right? Like so. Uh, let me um, introduce some notation for partial sums of the two series. So, like a n is going to be partial sums of the uh, series a n. So a one plus a two plus and so on plus a n, and b n is going to be a b1 plus b2 plus up to bn, right? So then what is the partial sum of the, this series? The partial sum of the, this series is going to be a1 plus b1 plus a2 plus b2 plus and so on plus a n plus bn. Let's say it's a n, but this is really just a n plus b n, right? So, and since the, um, partial sums of the series obtained by adding up two sequences is just the sum of the two partial sums. And for every one of them, if uh, a n approaches some limit a and b n approaches some limit b, then the um, limit of s n is going to be the sum of the limits a plus b, right? So th th this is just the, the sum law. But it, it's not going to work for the product law because um, so imagine that if you if instead of a sum you had a product, then then it wouldn't work, right? So because um, because uh, if you if you consider the, the series the sum from say one to infinity of a n times b n, and if you take its partial sum, so a one b one plus a two b two plus and so on plus a and b n, then this does not equal to the product of the partial sum, right? So a1 plus a2 plus and so on plus a n times b1 plus b2 plus and so on plus b n. It, it, it's a different thing since the, the product of the two partial sums contains um, some terms that do not appear in just the sum of pairwise products. Like, for example, the, the, this product will contain a1 times a b2, right? But here, there is no a1 times b2, right? So th this is why it, it works for sums, but not for, for products. All right, um, so here is how we can apply it. Um, well, the, the first example is rather trivial because it is just a geometric series, right? So, uh, but on the other hand, what, what we can do, we can take the, this five, um, factor it out and then when we look at whatever remains we can apply the geometric series formula to, to it so I don't think that it really makes it easier though but whatever and here is another example that we can't really do without the uh, sum sum property right so because uh, here we have the sum of two different geometric series so basically this is the first geometric series so its common ratio is two thirds. So its sum is, uh, well, and the first term is one. So its sum is one over one minus two thirds. And now the second geometric series is this one. So, and its sum is five over the common ratio is one third. So one minus one third. Of course we have already computed it, right? So it's just 15 over two, so. This is really 3 plus uh, 15 over 2, which is, I guess, uh, 21 over 2. 
And then if you prefer in decimals, then it's 10.5, but it's not necessary. All right, so th th this is ba basically how the uh, summation property works. And uh, we can um, also reverse it. So if you have a divergent series, and if you multiply it by a non-zero constant, of course it has to be non-zero because if you multiply by a zero constant, then you will just get the sum of infinitely many zeros, which is zero and it would uh, converge. But if you multiply it by a non-zero constant, then you will get a divergent series. So why is that so? Is um, because basically if you begin with some series, um, say from one to infinity, an, and you know that the, this, this series diverges right so um suppose that you multiply by some some constant c some c uh, c times a n from one to infinity now why do we why do i know that the new series diverges also diverges because what if it it were not true what if the this series converged what if so I, I'm not saying that it converges, but what if it converged? So if it converged, it means that its sum would be uh, a finite number, say L. But if that is true, then we could construct the original series by multiplying um, elements of C A N with one over C, right? So because I can write C here and one over C here. And it, it would mean that the um, my um the, the sum of the original series will be one over c times l so it would be finite right so it, it would mean that my original series will be convergent too but it is not right so and basically because of that the, the, this is called the proof by contradiction and because of that um we can conclude that the the, the new series must diverge because it cannot converge or if it did converge, we would, uh, you know, just derive that the original series would also be converging. Well, and so if you multiply, for example, um, all entries of a harmonic series by some number, then um, you will get a divergent series. Well, and then uh, because of the, the same reason, the sum of a convergent and the divergent series is going to be divergent. So here is an example. So that's the end of the fifth part of the lecture.